We officially have potential Tropical Cyclone 9, which is expected to become Tropical Storm Helene as we go into tonight or tomorrow. And there are rapid developments that we are seeing right now in the infrared imagery. Notice this area of convection that is bubbling up across the central and western Caribbean, just east of the Yucatan Peninsula. We are starting to see a lot more thunderstorm activity, which does indicate that we are beginning to see intensification. For right now, this is just a disorganized blob of garbage, which will eventually become a considerable hurricane as we go into this week. But potentially even a major hurricane as it goes towards the Gulf Coast of the United States. One other thing I do want to point out is that we do have a tropical storm actually about to be a hurricane in the Pacific Ocean. This could actually play a factor into what we are seeing right now in the Northwest Caribbean Sea as we go throughout the week, and we are going to talk more about that here in a moment because things are about to get very interesting. Now, the National Hurricane Center has released their first forecast for upcoming Hurricane Helene. I'm going to say this right off the bat. This is a very conservative forecast in my opinion. Opinion. This could become a Category 4, maybe even higher landfalling hurricane in the United States. There's also a chance that it's only a Category 1 hurricane upon landfall in the United States. So there's still a large range, and the biggest thing that we need to watch for over the next 24 to 48 hours is how fast this you know, intensifies over the Caribbean Sea, and if this interacts with either the Yucatan Peninsula or interacts with Cuba. If it makes any land interactions, the intensity, I think, will be much lower than a Category you know, 4 hurricane, for example. But if it just goes right right through this little passway here in the Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico. This could very easily become the biggest storm of 2024 thus far, at least for the United States. So their forecast right now has this becoming a tropical storm sometime either late tonight or into tomorrow morning. Once we go into late Tuesday into early Wednesday, this is expected to become Hurricane Helene. As it moves to the north, it's eventually going to intensify rapidly over the Gulf of Mexico as, as it is a very favorable environment as of right now. Very little dry air in place. Very very little wind shear and as well as very warm water temperatures are going to propel this thing into a big storm and then once we go into Thursday morning this is expected to continue to make its way towards Florida and it is likely to be a major hurricane by this point the National Hurricane Center has this topped off at 110 mile per hour winds that is a very high end category two I will I honestly expect that to be you know raised here over the next 24 hours and then by the time it makes landfall sometime Thursday afternoon it'll be potentially causing major impacts like storm surge flooding rain fall hurricane force winds across the state of Florida and unfortunately we are going to be most likely talking about the potential for catastrophic impacts for those near the coastline which we're going to talk all about here over the next few minutes let's begin with the tracks and overall the spaghetti models this gives you an idea of where computer models think that this is going to go this is a very fluid situation because we don't yet have an organized system and if this interacts with land at all we could see the path of this change quite a bit so keep that in mind it keeps going back and forth but for right now most of the computer models have a consensus that this will make landfall either near Panama City, Florida or back over in the Big Bend. I would not be surprised if this continues to shift a bit further to the east. I would not rule out a landfall near Tampa either. There are computer models that are indicating that that is a possibility, so do not rule that out. If you're over in Tampa, you need to be prepared for the potential for something more significant, potentially, again, a major hurricane. And then if you're back over in the Big Bend, I would definitely be prepared for a major hurricane, as that is definitely becoming a much stronger likelihood. Further to the west, it does not appear as if we're going to be seeing a landfall further west of Panama City. Would say it's a low chance, but it's definitely a very low chance because overall the steering factors are promoting a landfall somewhere in the state of Florida. Computer models are in a general consensus when it comes to maybe the track, but the intensity is so up in the air. Computer models are anywhere from a tropical storm upon landfall all the way up to a Category 4 hurricane. Now, granted, I think that this is just going to continue to rise over the next few days as we begin to see this develop more, and I do think a Category 4 and even a Category 5 cannot be ruled out as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico or at some point in the Gulf of Mexico. Whether it makes landfall that intense is very uncertain, but I do think, again, the ceiling is very high with this if it takes the right track. And the other thing that we'll have to keep in mind is that this tropical storm slash hurricane back over in the Pacific Ocean could become a big factor long term with this system because if we get a lot of wind shear from this storm that is right now in the Pacific Ocean, that actually could weaken this system substantially over the next couple of days. So that is a big thing we also have to watch for. So again, there are a lot of factors to how intense this gets, but the overall general consensus with the GEFS Ensemble members, which is essentially a group of models that are essentially showing us the intensity and track of the system, do indicate that half of them have this intensifying into a potentially an intense hurricane as early as Wednesday afternoon. The other half currently have this as a tropical storm or a very low-end Category 1 hurricane by Wednesday, and then by Thursday, by the time it's close to making landfall or is making landfall, there are still about 50-60% to 60 of models that have this 
at at least a category two or three intensity, while the other about 30 to 40 percent have this more at a tropical storm or low end hurricane. So there is obviously a big spread there in terms of intensity, but landfall does appear as if it will be sometime late Thursday morning or into the afternoon hours. Now let's go through the computer models and give you an idea of what the forecasted potential out of this is in terms of maybe some scenarios. We're going to begin with the GFS model. Again, this is a deterministic model. It does not handle intensity very well, but I do think it handles the potential impacts very well. So we're going to begin with Wednesday afternoon. Notice how the GFS model has this going right between the Yucatan Peninsula and as well as Cuba. And overall, it has an intensifying very rapidly as we go into Thursday. So this one actually has more of a delayed rapid intensification compared to the hurricane models, which I'll show you here in a moment. By Thursday morning, this is moving towards Florida as a pretty intense hurricane down to 950 millibars. And then eventually by Thursday afternoon, it has a making landfall in the big bend of Florida as a very intense hurricane, at least a category three hurricane in that area. Now, if this track does you know, stand true and also the intensity stands true, we are going to be talking about significant storm surge, especially back over in western Florida. So Tampa Bay should be on alert for this. Storm surge is going to be the biggest impact out of this hurricane, in my opinion. Another big thing is the hurricane force wind field is going to be relatively large if this is a category three plus hurricane. And even the tropical storm force winds is probably going to be taking up the entire state of Florida if this path does hold true. And it could go as far west as areas like Louisiana. So that's another big thing that you need to make sure that you're aware of. Make sure that you're getting gas in your cars. Make sure that you're getting you know, supplies for at least a week because we are going to have the potential for some power outages. Now, I'm not saying that this is 100% going to happen, but this is what you should be prepared for in case this does happen. It's a very fluid situation, as I mentioned before. And overall, things could change on a dime. We could be talking about a Category 4 hurricane upon landfall or a Category 1. It's a very large range as of right now because of so many different factors. Now, the overall wind speeds are going to be, again, relatively, you know, again, a relatively large wind field. The wind gusts that the GFS model is indicating are at least hurricane force winds, even as far east as like Orlando, Florida by Thursday afternoon, pending that it takes this sort of track towards the Big Bend and the entire state of Florida essentially seeing at least tropical storm force wind gusts. Now I'm going to show you three different hurricane models, and these models are built specifically just for hurricanes, so they are usually pretty accurate. Now with that said, we do not have a great parameterization yet here in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea, and so overall, until we have hurricane hunters in this storm, things are still a very fluid situation. But right now, the HAFSB model run is indicating that this will become a hurricane as early as Tuesday afternoon in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea, and then by Wednesday morning, this actually rapidly intensifies before it's even in the Gulf of Mexico. This is the Yucatan Peninsula right here. Over here is Cuba. Notice how intense this already is by Wednesday morning. Now, honestly, I still think that this is an unrealistic scenario, but as we go into Thursday morning, this model brings it down to 888 millibars of pressure. I honestly don't know if this is really going to happen. I think that this is a big stretch. With that said, we still need to make sure that we are really taking this seriously because this still has a very high ceiling with the potential for, you know, significant rapid intensity intensification in the Gulf of Mexico on Wednesday and Thursday. And then by Friday, this is our, by Thursday night, I should say, this makes landfall in the Big Bend of Florida as a Category 4 plus hurricane. Now, again, that's not a guarantee. It's just one model run. The HMON model has a little bit different of a track. It actually has it intensifying in the same way, but a little bit weaker in nature, still a Category 4 plus hurricane. And it has it making landfall also in the Big Bend of Florida as we go into late Thursday uh, night. So sometime around 6 or 9 o'clock Thursday. And then lastly, the H. WRF model has this going right near Cuba as we go into early Wednesday morning as a pretty intense hurricane as well and then eventually intensifies as it moves towards the state of Florida down to 930 millibars of pressure and also makes landfall up in the Big Bend. Now as I mentioned a few times this is a very fluid situation. There are going to be major developments over the next 48 hours. I highly recommend that you are subscribed to the channel down below and click the bell icon down below so you're notified with our latest videos and live streams. I am planning on doing at least one live update either tonight or tomorrow. So make sure that you have that bell icon clicked down below so you're notified whenever that happens. Again, a lot of fluid stuff happening right now. We don't exactly know what the intensity is going to be. It could be anywhere from a Category 1 up to a Category 4 or 5 hurricane. So you need to make sure that you are prepared, though, for worst-case scenario in case that does end up happening here in the state of Florida.